Good morning, everybody. My name is Barry Schwartz, and this is the Search Buzz video recap. Today is Friday, May 17th, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at seamailtable.com. We got the Google AI overviews, formerly SGE, rolling out to the US users. I don't see it yet, but it should be out for, for, soon for everybody. Uh, Google has announced a bunch of new AI search features at Google I.O. We saw a lot of Google ranking volatility over the past week, including today. Google has a new web search filter that only shows you text links. Google Ads seems to be testing out ad summaries, AI summaries, and much more. So definitely stay tuned. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Wix. Check out Wix has a lot of stuff with AI. So Wix AI, Wix AI, Wix AI. That's a pun on what's going on at Google at Google I.O. But anyway, check out Wix.com and check out the Wix SEO Learning Hub. Okay, so first up, Google has officially started to roll out the Google AI overviews, formerly known as SGE, in the U.S. search results. It should be fully live by sometimes next, next week for all U.S. users. Doesn't seem to be a way to opt out of it, which we'll get to a little bit later. AI overviews are basically Google's AI way of creating feature snippets where they basically will pull together multiple sources across the web to kind of use AI to actually answer your questions. Google AI overviews, according to Google, and I spoke in detail with Google uh, about this uh, prior to the launch, will basically be shown only when Google thinks they could go ahead and provide more value than what's shown in the actual search results. And according to recent data, both from um, diff two different companies, um, Bartos from Only and, and, and other companies, the SGE, or now what's called the AI overviews, are showing up a lot less often than they did. Originally, they were showing up for like 65, 70%, 60% or so of all queries. Now they're showing closer to like, down to some, one study said 35%, now a new study says 14%. So it's less likely to see these AI overviews even when they go launch live um, than you would have seen them when they were an SGE labs result. Uh, Hema from Google told me that clicks to publishers will increase. They said the actually click-through rate is higher in the AI overviews than they are in the normal web search results, which kind of like blew my mind because I don't think that it would, would be the case. Um, but that's what they told us. And, and Sundar Pichai in an interview with CNBC said um, that they are prioritizing you know, that ecosystem, making sure it generates traffic and so forth. Um, and, you know, basically saying we're looking to over, overall, there's an increase of clicks to searcher, to use uh, publishers. But Google won't prove it. Google will not share why or share data with publishers showing them that there is an increase in clicks. Google Search Console reporting will not separate out AI overview clicks, like a filter for a search appearance to say, these are the clicks you're getting from AI overviews, the click-through rate, the impressions, versus web search results. They're lumped together with all web search. So if you want, Google is counting the AI overview impressions and clicks and click-through rate overall, but you're not going to be able to say, I only want to see AI overviews. You can say, I want to see everything, but you can say, just show me AI overviews, just like you can see featured snippets. This is the same move that Microsoft did with Bing, Bing Chat for uh, now you know, known as Copilot and Bing Search within Bing Webmaster Tools. When they launched it, they lumped it together as well, so they can't show you the, the differential between uh, their AI overviews, which is called Copilot, um, and web search results. Now they're, everything's lumped together. And Google, even though Google can show it to us, even though Bing can show it to us, and they were planning to show it to us, they are not. And it's pretty upsetting. There is no way for publishers to just really opt out of AI overviews. You could use tricks like using the no snippet tag and the no and the max previews and robot.txt to say, don't show me, but it will impact on some level how you're shown in core web search. So if you do wanna go ahead and opt out and not show in the Google AI overviews, you don't wanna show your content there at all, you could use those types of methods to try not to show there, but it probably will have an impact on your web search results. It may delist them completely. It may remove the snippet. Glenn Gabe did a nice study uh, uh, overview showing that as well. Um, feature snippets will continue to show. Um, the SGE is no longer around. They changed, we're now calling them AI overviews. Ads will continue to show above, around, all over the place, and we'll have more about that um, in a week or so when Google's Marketing Live event goes out. That's the Google Ads event. So there's a lot there with AI overviews to discuss and keep that in mind. Also, a lot of searchers, a lot of searchers are now starting to see it in the US, and there's a lot of complaints, as you would imagine, in the Google forums and from Google searchers saying, I want to turn these off. We discussed this when AI overviews were started to show live for um, 
for like a test subset set of users, like a small subset of users. Google was testing that back in March and people were complaining when they had it on by default. And you're gonna see a lot of that now. We posted a screenshot, multiple people posted a screenshot of those AI overviews um, complaints in the Google Webmaster forums. There are definitely Chrome extensions you can use to actually block them and so forth. It's funny because Microsoft has a way of turning them off in settings when you, in Bing search, but there's no way to turn them off in Google for some reason. Uh, but there's lots of complaints, and you, I, I expected this. Whenever Google makes any change, even a pixel on their website, uh, searches complaints. So keep that in mind. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of people do not want that. And as I discussed, Glenn Gabe wrote a nice post discussing how you can remove your content from showing up um, in the Google AI overviews. You can use no snippets. You can use max previews. You can use the mechanism. There's a lot of trial and error. You have to like, try it on a URL by URL basis. Make sure Google indexes this and process it. And within a few hours, you can actually see that if the, the thing actually worked or not. But it's a lot of work for large publishers to try to say, I don't want to show up for AI overviews, but I'm okay with showing up in web search. And there is no specific control from Google to say, don't show me in the AI overviews, do not use my content in the AI overviews, and don't show links to me in the AI overviews. But in my opinion, I think ultimately, publishers will want to be shown there in the long run if Google gets this right and Google does everything right that they're supposed to. On the other AI, um, Google I.O. news around AI search, Google released a bunch of, or is releasing a bunch of new features around AI search, including adjusting the ability to adjust the AI overviews. There's now an original mode that they're going to launch in labs, a simpler mode, and a breakdown mode. So simpler is for like if you want to have a very simple AI overview with a very simple answer, whereas a break it down mode will give you a very detailed answer. Also, Google has multi-step reasoning, which will give you answers around more complex queries without the need to actually click on the break it down. Um, it just gives you a much more detailed answer and step-by-step -step to show you that, including now this new feature called planning. Again, another labs overview, which helps you plan like three-day trips and so forth, which you can then swap out different er elements in that trip, in that planning, and then export that to Gmail or Google Docs. A lot of the stuff was from Gemini and Bard. And then Google also said there's a way in rolling out to core search, not to the labs, but the real web search, AI organized search results page, um, where AI will be used to actually organize the search results page into the categories that make sense. And then another labs feature that's coming out in coming months is lens search with video, where you can actually search and ask questions in the video, like you do with lens, you take a picture and ask a question, you type a question. Here you can actually record a video and ask a question ver uh, with voice, and Google will give you an answer, which is pretty cool. Um, also, Google demoed this really nice feature um, after to show off um, how they can use Gemini with video to say, show me, what is this on stage? What is, where did I leave my glasses? Stuff like that. And actually, Gemini will help you do that. And that came um, at the GUI O demo, which is really, really impressive. But the day before that, OpenAI had a, uh, a their announcement like last minute because somehow OpenAI knew what Google was going to announce, and I guess Google knew what a, 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 um, a, uh, OpenAI was going to announce. And OpenAI released their GPT 4.0, and then demo is putting something very similar, which was mind blowing. It was the day before Google I/O, and it was basically like having a real chat with a live person, a real person with personality. It was pretty impressive, and it was actually saying, you know, where did I leave my glasses? Could you read this code for me? Could you help me with this homework assignment? Um, it was really, really, really impressive, and I posted those videos below as well. Which is funny, 45 minutes before um, OpenAI's announcement, Google kind of previewed that demo of their video answers. So they're all like trying to like get, get one in front of each other, which is pretty funny to see. All right, let's get out of the AI news. Google's search results have been heated all week long, and it's actually somewhat heated again today. Um, so I might cover something over the weekend, we'll see. But Google's search results have been heated since May 9th and they continue to be very heated. Here's some tracking tools that show it to you, and there's lots of volatility and, and a lot of chatter in the SEO community, a lot of movement, so just keep that in mind that if you are noticing ranking fluctuations over the past week or so, um, especially maybe even today, you are definitely not alone. Gary from Google confirmed um, a month or so ago at, a, at the SERP conference that Google has delisted or de-indexed a vast amount, he said, vast amounts of URLs in February 2024. He said... Um, let me quote, since February, we, we, where suddenly we just decided that we de-index a vast amount of URLs on a site just, be, uh, on, on, uh, on a site just because the perception, the perception of that changed. Now, basically, um, this could happen. He said, if you notice a, in Google Search Console, the error of crawled but not indexed, um, that might be a sign that Google doesn't value your, your content, doesn't see value in your content, and will remove it from their index. 
he said the vast majority of the time it's a technical issue with your website, it's not a quality issue. But if you do see that around February, it might have been related to a quality issue. Google has lifted some of the reputa site reputation abuse penalties, manual actions, um, right over the weekend last week. So it took a few days, people submitted reputation, uh, uh, reconsideration requests, and Glenn Game noticed that people, uh, some of the sites that he was tracking, that he has access to in Google Search Console, that had manual actions for site reputation abuse, saw them being lifted. Again, if you were hit by this and you took remedy, um, it's not like you're gonna rank again for those types of queries because you remove those pages. But in any event, the, the manual action has been lifted for a lot of people who submitted a reconsideration request and did it in a good way. Google's John Mueller said, um, the next time you could potentially see a recovery and a lift after the September Google Helpful Content Update is when there's another core update. And he was asked, um, saying, assuming a site hit by the HSU Helpful Content Update is in, in 2023, has fixed everything that caused the site-wide classifier to be applied, what is the time frame for the site to start climbing again? And John said fixed in quotes, basically saying it's hard to define what fixed is a hard, he said fixed is a hard to say when it comes to relevancy, but I'd assume bigger changes would be visible when the next core update happens. And a lot of people are not happy with that response, like what do we have to fix? Tell us what we have to fix. And Google's like, don't do things for us. So it's a circular thing that's going around and around in the SEO community. Um, so keep that in mind. On that, Danny Sullivan, the Google search liaison, basically said, we read your feedback over the past few months, including the feedback form from the March core update. And he basically said, um, we will make changes, certain changes and so forth, but he has no, personally, he has no control. He will feed, send that feedback back to the people who make those decisions and hopefully they will make changes, but he's listened to your feedback. He hears what small and independent publishers are complaining about and they will do better. He specifically, he said, Google can do better with a subset of, uh, subset he mentioned above with great content but not being well recognized and Google can do better in helping to guide away uh, away from maybe unhelpful things that may have been learned by others um, and basically Google's going to do that and so forth so there may be changes in the future he's not promising it because he doesn't have actual control to make those changes but he does read the feedback and he gives it back to the team that does one of those changes may be an automated action viewer we discussed this over a, over a decade ago, probably a dozen years ago, where when Google came out with the Google Manual Action Viewer, where they show you if you have a manual penalty, a manual action, we asked Google to come up with something that shows you that if you were hit by a penalty, tell us that you were hit by an algorithmic If you tell us that you were hit by the helpful content update, tell us you were hit by the core update, tell us you were hit by Panda, Penguin, whatever it might be, tell us. And Danny Sullivan said, I think we will bring, bring this back and discuss it more and take it more serious, not seriously, but basically consider it and reconsider it. Um, I don't think they're gonna launch it because Danny Sullivan said, again, it may cause issues for, for sites, for spammers who are trying to manipulate the Google search results to say, hey, oh, I'm hit by a penalty, I'm not hit by a penalty, and see that more in real time. Uh, but Google said they will consider ways to actually show uh, publishers and website owners, content creators, if they were hit by an algorithmic issue as opposed to that. Also, Danny Sullivan announced this week that Google has released, and I see it, the web filter results. We saw this a few months ago where Google was testing web results in the search results, which actually filter the search results by only text links, and now it's live. Google made it live on Google I.O. Day on Tuesday, where you can actually click a web link. Some people don't see it yet, but they will, and sometimes it's under the more link. It depends, it's dynamic. Sometimes it shows in the main nav, sometimes it shows in the more link depending on the query, uh, but when you click it, it will only show you text links. Of course, it will show you ads and so forth, but it will also show you only text links. It won't show you form, like forum, discussion forums, or other elements like videos um, and so forth, and images and stuff like that. It'll only show you text links, like bringing you back to pre-Google Universal Search 2006 Google results. Google, according to Bloomberg, has lowered the rankings of deep fake porn sites. So if you are in that business of doing deep fakes, um, you will see that a lot of the search results have been re-ranked. According to uh, Bloomberg, the article interviewed Similar Web, who showed that Mr. Deepfakes was 21% lower in the first 10 days of May compared to the previous six months. Um, and the second most popular site in that area was down 25%. I looked at SEMrush data and it showed an 11% drop from April to May um, in terms of their visibility in search. So it seems to be working whatever Google did. Google has locked down the complaints thread where a lot of uh, content creators are saying my image thumbnail is not showing up in the Google search results. This is not just for recipes, it's for anything that deserves an image in the Google snippets, in the Google search results, which shows an image thumbnail in the actual search results. We covered this, I think, three times since February. Um, and Google has not made real changes around that. Um, and Ryan T from Google went ahead and responded to those basically complaints saying, one, we hear you, I sent the feedback along, two, I can't reply to every single 
uh, specific question because a lot of them have different reasons why they're not showing. And three, um, we may make changes around this in the future, but definitely look at our guide, Google guidelines and the helpful content update uh, content uh, policies to see why maybe you can make changes to that, which implies to me that maybe these sites aren't deserving according to Google for these thumbnails. So we'll keep that in mind. Then he locked down the thread and he can't respond to it anymore. So good luck with that. Uh, Google service areas may be a new local ranking factor according to some at local SEOs. Darren Shaw from WhiteSpark went ahead and said he saw some evidence from people as well as some own testing that it might be a, a service area, which service areas are business which you select in Google business profiles. Um, may now be used for local ranking purposes. Uh, previously, it was never used, but according to a bunch of SEO, local SEOs, it may be being used, and they're doing more testing to make sure that's the case, so keep, keep tracking that, and we'll let you know if it actually has uh, panned out. Talking about local, Google Local Service Ads is now rolling out, it seems, or maybe testing the ability to message multiple businesses. We saw this a few months ago uh, when Anthony Higman spotted that where you would send a message to one advertiser, then we'll say, do you want to send the same message after the fact to multiple other advertisers on local service ads? Now it seems Google's doing the other way where it says, first click if you want to send this to multiple advertisers, and then it will give you a list of advertisers to send it to, and then you can actually mass send those um, to people. It seems like Google advertisers are not happy about that, but it is what it is. Anthony Higman spotted that Google seems to be rolling out or testing AI summaries in the Google Ads console, where it basically will show you an AI summary of your ad performance over a certain period of time and then give you suggestions on why you saw an improvement or a decline and what you could do to actually make changes. This is a pretty cool feature that Google will probably launch next week at Google Marketing Live. Google Ads is also has changed the ad functionality for suspended accounts. Um, so now they're giving, they're, they're changing the limits around suspended accounts and what they could do functionality-wise and cannot. I have a whole list of those changes on uh, May 14th at seroundtable.com, so definitely take a look at that. Google AdSense will not be changing the minimum reporting threshold. Google planned on making the change to minimum reporting threshold for Google AdSense pub uh, publishers, uh, specifically around custom channels and search styles to make them 100 clicks per day as the minimum threshold starting on May 15th. Google said they said, hey, we're not going to do that anymore. Um, we're, we're going to reconsider it and come back to you with a new plan or whatever that might be. Any event, thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. Thanks again to Wix for sponsoring. Sorry this took a little bit longer than normal, but it was big news this week from Google I.O. Everyone have a great, safe, and healthy weekend, and I'll see you guys next. Goodbye.